And ladies and gentlemen, we come to our final award, which is a special award, and to make the presentation one of our most popular figures in this country, certainly one of our most accomplished actors. His career spans over 50 years. He's made over 80 films, and earlier this year he celebrated his diamond wedding anniversary. Sir John Mills. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's a lovely noise for an actor to hear, especially if he's out of work. <laughs> well, half a century ago, a ravishingly beautiful young lady was lunching at the Mayfair Hotel with her agent. And uh, it so happened, on that particular day, uh, a gentleman was there too. He was rather an amazing, wonderful character. His name was Gabriel Pascal. He was a Hungarian producer and director, and he was working in England. He was an amazing character. He was very colorful, extroverted, and a strange command of the English tongue. And he spotted this vision of beauty dining at another table, and he looked at her, rose to his feet, and went over with no introduction, and said, sweet virgin, are you an actress? And she said, yes, he said, well, take your hair down, you look like a tart. <laughs> and uh, a few days later, he tested uh, this uh, young actress for the leading part in Major Barbara, and she walked right into it. And that was the beginning of the glorious career of that lovely lady, Miss Deborah Carr. And uh, BAFTA have really got it right. They're honoring her with their special award. And I think that's a simply splendid idea. Well, now, I have very little time to talk about this marvelous career of my dear friend Deborah. I would like to just mention one or two things. I've seen, luckily, nearly every single film she's ever made. Now, I've always seen a superb performance with that lovable character always sort of shining through. Uh, she made an enormous hit with Major Barbara. I think the first time America really became aware of her was in a picture called the life and death of Colonel Blimp. She was great in that. In 1947, she won the New York Critics Award for I See a Dark Stranger and Black Narcissus, in which she played a nun. Now, she's always had wonderful notices. These were absolute raves. The Sunday Express said, Miss Carr is quite flawless. An observer gave her a very marvelous, rather strange note. It said, she is quietly magnificent authority within the few inches revealed by her quaff, whatever that means. And the Daily Mail said she achieved spiritual beauty in performance as well as appearance. Now, of course, that lost her to us, and Hollywood grabbed her. And we're very sorry when it happened. In 1949, she made a lovely picture called Edward, My Son, with Spencer Tracy. That was first of her American films to receive an Oscar nomination. Now, Deborah was always known as um, the English Rose. And I don't know whether she really liked that, but that was, that was a title that she got stuck with. And uh, we suffered a quite severe shock, because she suddenly appeared in a picture called From Here to Eternity. And we watched our English Rose rolling about in the sand and the surf, entwined and engulfed with Bert Lancaster. And it was a marvelous performance. It was, it was quite a shock to us. But um, in 1956, she put her, our minds at rest again with an enchanting performance in The King and I. Now, I've seen many Kings and I, but really, for me, Deborah was the definitive I. In 1957, she made two films with her great friend, Robert Mitchum. Heaven Knows Mr. Allison and The Sundowners. And that, for that, she got her third New York Critics Award. Then she came home again. She made The Innocence and Chalk Garden, in which uh, Haley and I were very lucky to be in. I watched Haley fall immediately 
under her spell. Now, throughout her career, uh, Deborah has gathered, I suppose, more rave reviews than any star of her generation. She's played opposite some of the greatest stars of our time, Cary Grant, Yul Brynner, Frank Sinatra, Rita Hayworth, Kirk Douglas, David Niven, Gene Simmons, Spencer Tracy, David Niven, Gene Simmons, Spencer Tracy, Clark Gable, Joan Crawford, etc., etc. Her complete lack of any kind of temperament, her kindness, her sense of humor, her generosity, has made her, in my opinion, the most popular and loved actress in the profession. Now I think it's time to let Deborah's wonderful career speak for itself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Deborah Carr. Deborah Carr, born in Helensburgh in Scotland 70 years ago. What Sir John didn't say there was that she actually went into retirement first when she was in her late 40s. But then she came out of retirement 15 years later, and in 1984, as he said, she made the Assam Garden and then kept working. And a, a standing ovation here in the Grosvenor House Hotel, the first of the evening, a standing ovation for Deborah Carr. A sign of how warmly people feel towards her. Oh, my goodness. This is a moment, I think, when I wish I was Italian. <laughs> borrow a bizarre trick from Mr. Bertolucci and put on my specs. I only, I'm overcome, I really am. I only want to say how deeply moved I am by your warm reception and how deeply moved I am that the British Academy have decided to honor me for a job I have adored doing for half a century. Ms. Carr, I'm very sorry to interrupt you at this point, but we have satellite time for one minute and we have a surprise for you over there. Could I please ask you to step over to the monitor? Because the gentleman's name has already been mentioned by Sir John Mills, and he wanted to pay tribute to you, Robert Mitchum. Oh. Oh. Hurry up, Robert. I was very honored to be numbered among, by Mr. Sir John Mills as among the etc. I take a, a great pleasure in this occasion. Um, she massaged my back in the outback of Australia. She minded my manners and danced with me in England. And she nursed me through a siege of the horrible shrinkage on the tropical island of Tobago. One of the great ladies of the screen and the theater a beautiful woman and my friend, Miss Deborah Carr. Oh. May I say thank you so much? No, I'm sorry we had to interrupt you. Oh, thank you, you dreadful man, you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Satellites are zooming, I have to hurry. I just want to say that it has given me the greatest satisfaction in my adult life, my career, 
And secretly, like Mrs. Thatcher, I am hoping there is more to come. <laughs> if not, it doesn't matter. I must confess I've had a marvelous time. Thank you, thank you, thank you with all my heart.